the voice of the lime tree, working with Tilia Bast in order to make reconstructions of prehistoric textiles and artifacts. Prehistoric people were aware of the importance of nature in order to survive. We have forgotten a lot of the knowledge, craft and skills which enable them to live together with nature. In today's world, we still need nature to survive, so it's very important to live and work together with nature rather than just take from it. This find, a cloak, comes from Switzerland, discovered under the Zurich Parkhaus Opera House, and is attributed to the lake site settlements of the Finn culture from 3900 to 3500 BC. A large part of the cloak has been well preserved, which makes it possible to make a plausible reconstruction. The top, the neck with fringes, the front with fringes, and the construction method are all clearly visible. Several more fragments of twill weave with fringes have been found. It could be that this was once a common garment. The lime tree, Tilia, has been growing in the Northern Hemisphere since 8000 BC and is recognized by its heart-shaped leaves. There are two native species of lime, the summer lime, the large-leafed variety, and the winter lime, the small-leafed variety. Lime wood is white-yellow in color and has a fine grain which makes it very suitable for wood carving. The trunk of the lime tree often has buds and branches sprouting out at the base. The white-yellow flowers, with their five petals, develop into round or oval seeds. Leaves, flowers and seeds are all edible to make all kinds of products using various techniques. Products like ropes, baskets, cloaks, fishing nets, bags, shoes and knife sheaths. This tree had a lot of bark damage and was cut down by the council in the spring. This is exactly the right time as the sap stream starts to flow at this time and the bark then comes off more easily. After only a couple of hours, the tree can be stripped of its bark. By putting the bark in natural slow flowing water and letting it rot, it becomes soft and slimy. Depending on the water and the thickness of the bark, it can be left for around six weeks. If the bast is easy to remove, it can be taken out of the water and rinsed off. The entire inner bast can now be pulled out. It feels very slimy and smells unpleasant because of the rotting process. The inner bark is now rinsed once more and hung to dry. Once dried, the fibres have a lovely sweet smell. By pulling the dried bast over a round stick, the layers are easily separated from each other. After loosening, the fibres are then sorted according to length and structure. The bast layers on the bark side are coarser in structure and more orange, while the layers on the inside, near the wood of the tree, are very fine, strong and almost transparent. While sorting the material for the cloak, the nice long straight strips are torn off, but all the shorter and harder pieces are also kept. For the start of the cloak, first make a 4mm rope. Long fibres are then laid over this rope, which forms the length of the cloak. The bundle is then neatly twisted in the middle and then laid over the rope. The first row of binding lies right up against the first rope. When all the bundles have been fastened along the neckline over a length of 30 centimetres, the second row of binding can be added one centimetre lower. To make the cloak wider at the bottom, more will be added along the entire length of the cloak. This increase in width creates folds. 
These were also clearly present at the find. The first binding rows at the neck are close together. In the rest of the cloak, they are one and a half to two centimeters apart. The twill weave now forms a good textile surface. The cloak is about one meter long. The further down the garment we get, the wider it gets and the longer it then takes to make a row. The longest rows of binding at the bottom take a whole day to finish. To finish off the garment, the fringes at the neck and the front are attached with a needle. It's also possible to attach the fringes while making it. At the front, a needle is used to insert a bundle of fibres between the two threads of the starter rope and back through the next twist in the rope. The bottom edge of the garment was not visible when it was found. The fringes in the reconstruction are the result of the way in which the mantle is made and the fringes help drain water off the garment. What is striking about this cloak is the fringe edge at the neck that falls over the shoulder as extra protection from the rain. The fringes on the front have the same effect. Lime bark is used as material for all kinds of objects and clothing and has been found at many archaeological sites. One of the first textile techniques used by humans was twilling, making rope. Fishing nets in needle binding and knotting techniques, baskets and mats in coiling technique, the weaving of shoes, knife sheaths and hats using twill weaving and many more beautiful things. Trees are the foundation of a forest, both above and below ground. Their roots, the soil and the mycelium form a complex network of nutrients and communication. Trees don't have a brain or a nervous system, but there are huge similarities at a structural and molecular level with that of a vertebrate nervous system. Plants, animals and humans may not be so different after all. I continue to admire the skills of prehistoric people while making these reconstructions and enjoy working with the materials that nature provides. <laughs>